What's up everyone, my name's Platinum Howler, coach of your Delta Gligers. Today I'm bringing you my week 5 team builder of the BBR. We're going up against Seabad and his Detroit Steel Wings with his beautiful new Corviknight adapted logo. You can see his team over on the right side of the screen. His team looks a little bit different than it did last week and he just made transactions um, active as of this week. Uh, before he had Scizor and Noivern, and he replaced those for Haxorus and Tangrowth, and those are both uh, difficult mons in the matchup for us to deal with, but uh, we have certainly prepped quite a bit for the Tangrowth, I will tell you that. Uh, as, I, as last week we went up against Rillaboom, a uh, very strong grass type, we brought both of our four times grass resists, and we did the same thing here. So. This team this week is very, very spicy. <laughs> um, pretty much, it's going to alternate between sort of standard set and then heat set. Sort of standard set, heat set. Sort of standard set, heat set. Uh, yeah, so uh, lots of. We're packing all the heat this week. Seabad doing pretty well so far this season, off to a 3 and 1 start. So. You know, it, it it serves us well to bring some uh, to bring some fun sets that you know maybe they're not the most viable sets in the matchup, but uh, we can we can have some fun with this one. And uh, should we meet again in the playoffs, then we can uh, maybe try to put together a, a more competitive team and maybe a little dial back the heat just a little bit. I'm very grateful for the opportunity to battle Seabad, uh, and then we got Steve next week. Two former GBA coaches. Uh, as a, like years ago, it was my dream to play in the GBA one day, and uh, you know I think I'm pretty happy with where I'm at right now. Even though we may not have made it to the GBA, or uh, should we say the GBA didn't make it to us? But now we'll we'll forget forget I just said that. Um, but yeah, I, I had the pleasure of getting to battle Randy HLD, a former GBA champion, uh, in the Bregex uh, PGP tournament last year, uh, before the BBR was even a thing. That was uh, that was just Team Bregex, and it's amazing how that has led us to this point where we have the opportunity to battle back-to-back -back GBA coaches, or battle GBA coaches back-to-back -back weeks. That would be correct grammar. Anyways. Let's get into the team that we have this week. Pangoro, pretty good matchup. It can, it doesn't need a lot of attack investment to hit the things that I need it to, uh, such as the Diggersby and the Sand Slash. Those are the two main things. So Sand Slash, if he's going to bring it, that is his only Stealth Rocker, which is probably the biggest weakness of his team is the fact that Alolan Sand Slash is his, uh, is the only thing he has to set rocks. So, spoilers, we don't have heavy duty boots on our Vril Corona this week. Um, uh, we have, so if he's, gonna, if he's gonna bring that thing as a rocker, then we have, you know, it's much less of a threat. And that kind of opens the door for our Aromatisse. Because I feel like, um, given Aromatisse's 9-0 stat line to start the season, uh, if he pays any attention to that in the in the on the side he sees that Aromatis has nine kills this season and zero deaths. Well I guess I guess I better bring my steel type to make sure it doesn't get any more kills. Um, so you know he could bring it as like a lead rocker or whatever and not try to sweep with it. Um, and in that case we can take that thing on super well because we hit him four times super effectively with drain punch uh, and we're boosting the power of both drain punch and bullet punch with our iron fist ability as well. Item choice is a little bit odd. Uh, <laughs> I, I decided to go with Big Root to uh, make sure that I, I recover as much HP from Drain Punch as possible. You might say, well, you could have just gone like a Black Belt or something. You boost the power of Drain Punch and in turn recover more HP as well. But Big Root, you actually recover more HP than you would uh, with, uh, with a Black Belt item. So. Why not? Why not? Uh, why not run Big Root just for just for the lulls, right? So, knockoff is here as well. So we mainly just for the dust mar. I not really anticipating myself to click knockoff all that much. I want to be clicking drain punch as often as possible. 
to make sure that I keep this Pangoro healthy, make sure that it can take hits from his physical attackers. Uh, and then we also have Bullet Punch uh, to just for a priority move to pick off anything that's weakened and also to hit Alola Ninetales for four times super effective damage. Uh, because we are not super offensive, it's not going to Oko the Ninetales. Uh, but if we get uh, if we get a little bit of chip off against him, uh, like we get any damage uh, off against him while he's trying to set Aurora Veil, then as long as Aurora Veil's not up when Pengoro comes in, we should be able to pick that off with a Bullet Punch. And also we have Parting Shot, because I didn't feel like I ne we needed another attacking move, and I had a little plan uh, in mind for the Tangrowth if that's going to be this uh, his initial switch into uh, Pangoro just because of how uh, naturally physically bulky it is. Uh, so Tangrowth, kind of a pain in the butt. We can Parting Shot out on that thing and go into our Trevenant. Tangrowth cannot break a Trevenant substitute at minus one uh, attack and special attack. Even if it has knockoff, actually if it has knockoff at minus one with no investment, then it has a 50% chance to break our substitute. Um, so if we can keep our substitute up and then we get a curse going, we can um, <laughs> chunk down the Tangrowth for 25% each turn if it wants to stay in, maybe force it to switch out if it's uh, wanting to get some uh, Regenerator HP back. Another thing that deals well with this Trevenant set is Mandibuzz, uh, but if we can get set up against that thing, then we can get 25% uh, per turn off against it as well. Uh, I'm not, I'm honestly not too sure how well this set is going to work, but I really felt like Trevenant uh, deserved an encore performance after its uh, four month sweep in week three. So it is here. It's also a very good wall to the Diggersby. It re uh, resists Earthquake and it's immune to its uh, normal stab. We are, however, still going to be taking a massive chunk of damage from uh, a knockoff if he has that on his set as well. So yeah, Horn Leech is basically here to make sure we can deal damage to that. And then Earthquake is our last move because Salazzle is annoying and can be a stolly little bitch. So I want to make sure that I have a move to hit that thing. Uh, just throw on Earthquake, and if it tries to come in to break my substitute, then I can Oko it. Next up, Choice Scarfed Lycanroc. I think this is a this is the best possible Lycanroc set I can bring in this matchup. Uh, we can outspeed Sand Slash in the hail. Uh, Jolly Max Speed Sound Slash. We're faster than that. Uh, we also outspeed a. Haxorus after a Dragon Dance, we we, out, we basically outspeed everything except uh, Scarfed Salazzle. So, uh, one thing that I realized that I didn't actually know before building this set is, uh, thanks to Tough Claws, Close Combat is actually a stronger attack uh, with Lycanroc Dust than Stone Edge is, even though it gets uh, Stab Boost via Stone Edge. Close Combat does more damage, and it's more accurate. But we had to have Stone Edge on here because uh, mainly for things like uh, the Mandibuzz. So yeah, that's pretty much that's pretty much the main reason why we have Stone Edge. And then also it hits the Nine Tails super effectively. So yeah, we can outspeed. We can even outspeed a Scarped Nine Tails with this uh, Lycan Rock set. So Play Rough hits the Haxorus. Uh, Stone Edge hits most things. Close Combat hits most things. And then also we have Brick Break. Uh, so we have dual fighting type moves. Um, but Brick Break will destroy Aurora Veil as well as uh, Oko, Alolan Sand Slash. So next, Heat Aromatis set. Okay, we're bringing offensive Trick Room with three attacks. All right. Now I'll talk about the item. I thought about running Kabia Berry to uh, make sure that we can take a Poison Jab better from something like a Haxorus. Maybe we can even take a Sludge Wave from Salazzle. Uh, but I decided against that because Haxorus can run on Nerve. Uh, I think it should probably run. Uh, actually, I don't know about that. Maybe he wants to run Moldbreaker Earthquake, uh, which would be able to hit my Ronin Wash. But uh, the chance for him to run on Nerve deterred me from uh, wanting to bring Kabia Berry here. Instead, we have a Lumberry, so we can switch on, so we can switch in on something like a Mandibuzz that might be wanting to go for a Toxic. Uh, or 
yeah, that's mainly the that's that's the main reason why. So we can cure ourselves from toxic. Uh, so we're really offensive. We can hit Mandibuzz extremely hard. We can we have a very uh, good chance of Okoing to Lazzle with Psychic, and we have a pretty much guaranteed chance of Okoing Alola Ninetales with Gyro Ball. Base 147 power Gyro Ball against max speed Alola Ninetales. Although, I think there's a good chance that if Alola Ninetales comes, which I'm almost sure that it will, uh, it's Seabad's kill leader at this point in the season. I think it's like 8 and 2 in 3 games played. So, uh, there's a good chance that it comes, but if it, it, it I could definitely see it being more uh, being bulkier as opposed to like max speed to try to outspeed Volcarona. Um, but yeah, Gyro Ball is still going to hit it for tons of damage, and we can set up Trick Room as our last move uh, to get something like our Dragalge. Even though Dragalge has quite a bit of speed investment, uh, it, it will still uh, outspeed a lot of his more offensive threats in the Trick Room. Uh, and as well as Pangoro could benefit from Trick Room, Trevenant can benefit from Trick Room. So, yeah, and of course our own Aromatis can benefit a lot from Trick Room as well. Next up, Volcarona, uh, Charty Berry to take uh, Rock Slides from stuff like Dustmar can pack Rock Slide, Alolan Sand Slats can pack Rock Slide. Um, and this is this is just a very good uh, response to Alolan Ninetales overall. If I were him, I would bring Encore on Alolan Ninetales so that he can try to Encore me into a setup move and then get a free switch into uh, whatever that can uh, do damage. So I'll have to be careful about that. We have enough speed. We ha we're aggressively speed creeping the Haxorus, which may or may not be a mistake. Uh, so if the Haxorus is only running enough speed for max speed Rotom Wash, then we will outspeed that. And we have a little bit in bulk to take hits better. Uh, we can roost off any Hail Chip damage that we take from Alola Ninetales. Quiver Dance up and try to outspeed everything and kill everything. It's, uh, you know, honestly the thing with Volcarona that I'm starting to figure out and why it's so dangerous is you don't have to game plan for it to sweep, but because it doesn't suffer from move slot syndrome and you can just throw Quiver Dance and a couple attacks on there, if you find the right situation to set it up, then it can just win without with you out with you without you even having to try, which is <laughs> Which is super cool. Uh, so hopefully we can, you know, get some more work out of Volcarona. It did well in week two, but it's died in all three games that it's hit the field in. It didn't hit the field last week, so it didn't get a death for that. But every time it's hit the field, it's died. So, you know, maybe one of these weeks we can actually pull off a Volcarona sweep. That would be cool. So last but not least is going to be this Dregalge that... Uh, I was debating whether or not I wanted to switch this out for Rotom Wash. Rotom Wash would have gave me more checks to other things on his team, like it would have given me a better matchup against Diggersby, uh, arguably a better matchup against Mandibuzz. That's uh, that's debatable uh, because you know uh, Dragout still hits Mandibuzz extremely hard with adaptability attacks, but. My front office suggested this and I wanted to try it out. We have Blunder Policy, Focus Blast, Dragalge. We're bringing Focus Blast, uh, Dragalge for the second week in a row. We landed our first one, so odds are we will miss the second one that we go for in this game. Uh, basically his only switch into this is a little Sand Slash, and if we connect Focus Blast, uh, that thing will die. If we miss, then we get plus two in speed, and we'll outspeed everything that is only running enough speed for my Volcarona. So we will not outspeed Salazzle, but Salazzle can only hit us with Dragon Pulse, uh, or it can just try to Toxic Stall us, because, you know, Corrosion. It can Toxic a Dragalge. Uh, but Draco Meteor annihilates that. Draco Meteor annihilates Diggersby. Uh, Sludge Wave, this is another thing that we can bring in against the Tangrowth. We definitely should be outspeeding Tangrowth because of all of our speed investment. And then we also have uh, Flip Turn, because why not? Uh, you know, adaptability, your stabs hit hard enough against most things. So throw on Flip Turn, flip turn there for uh, momentum. Just in case uh, we aren't going for a Focus Blast and we're not trying to 
make the bunder policy pop off so that's going to be the team we got quite a few tricks up our sleeve this week i'm hoping at least one of them works and we can uh, turn in a very entertaining match against uh, Seabad this week. I'm, I'm confident that it will be a much more entertaining match than last week's was. I'm still sorry about that, Ruppy. But yeah, if you enjoyed this team builder, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe to the channel to keep up with all of our Draft League content. And stay tuned for the battle coming your way tomorrow. Until then, we'll see you later.